human olfactory sense cannot compete with that of a dog. Our ears are not as sensitive as those of a cat. And we do not possess a sense based on ultrasounds as bats do. But our sight was designed by nature to be perfect for our needs. That's why scientists are working on strategies to decrease the possibility of losing it. But first, we need to understand more about how it works. To see an object, light needs to reflect off it and into our eyes. The light is focused on the retina, where different kinds of cells act as sensors, recording movements, colors, and shapes. The information then travels to the brain, which elaborates it. This is the moment at which we perceive we are seeing something, a car, food, a person we love. Michele Fischella completed his PhD in Basel, studying vision as part of one of the research projects financed by the SystemsX.ch initiative. We can see, thanks to at least 60 cell types in our eye, each one of these cells is specialized in a specific role. And there are at least seven different types of cells that are specialized in detecting movements. But the truth is that we know very little about what nerve cells do in our eye. What is worse, we know almost nothing about how these various types of nerve cells interact with each other and the brain to result in vision. Knowing what each cell in our retina actually does in detail is the prerequisite not only for understanding how human eyes work, but also for finding cures for the diseases that put vision at risk. Above all, for diseases related to aging that are becoming more and more frequent as a result of increasing life expectancy. One example is maculopathy, which leads to the loss of central vision. This disease affected the artist Edgar Degas, and he dedicated himself to sculpture in the latter part of his life, since he could execute it using mainly his sense of touch. Maculopathy is expected to affect 196 million people worldwide by 2020. And according to estimates, it affects one in 5,000 in Switzerland. Another example is retinite pigmentosa, which, on the contrary, impairs peripheral vision. It has been estimated that this affects one in 7,000 in Switzerland. These debilitating diseases currently have no cure. We know that in all these illness, many cells are preserved. But to restore vision, we need to understand how these cells work in healthy and in disease conditions. And importantly, we need to know how to reactivate them. In the retina, there are tens of thousands of cells concentrated on an area of about one square millimeter. Researchers want to find out the role of each of them. And to this end, they need to record the activity of retinal nerve cells in a controlled environment. That's why they created this microchip, the most advanced of its kind. It allows the simultaneous detection of 2,700 nerve signals. For this, the researchers need a retina whose structure is comparable to that of a human, a mouse retina. The mouse retina stays functional for several hours after that it has been removed from the eye and it also reacts to light stimulation and movements. Now this retina can be placed on the microchip that was developed thanks to the system X funding and we can record the reaction to movement of each cell in the retina. This kind of research needs technological know-how to develop cutting-edge tools like this microchip and the collaboration between biologists, mathematicians, and informatics experts to deal with the huge amount of data that is collected. 
All of these efforts are working towards a very ambitious goal. Becoming able to correct sight defects in the nerve cells themselves, in the retina, and maybe in future. Even deep inside the brain, where images are processed. <laughs>